So today we're going to do the handover video on the Bailey Advance 665. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you've got your fill-up points, they're just here. You've got your diesel in here and this on, on this particular model, you've got your Ad Blue as well, which is just down to there. Just opening up the passenger door, you've got your bonnet release catch, which is on this side of the vehicle, which I'll just pull now and I'll show you underneath the bonnet. Before I do, one thing to point out, you'll notice that you've got your remis cab blinds on this particular model at the front. To operate these, all you need to do is simply pinch and then pull out. They're on a magnetic strip on either side. It's the same thing with that side and they simply pull together in the middle and connect together on the magnetic strip. Moving under the bonnet, the main things that you need to know underneath here are obviously if you're ever needing to jump start the vehicle. I'll lift the bonnet up for you now and just point out where you need to do that from. With the bonnet open, you can then see underneath here where you need to hook your point up if your battery needs a jump start. If that's the case, you've got your negative onto here, which just clips onto there, and then your positive is just on this tab here. Now, just located on the top of that is a cap which usually flicks down. It's quite hard to see in this light, but you've got a plus on here just to indicate that it's positive. Flick that cap up, and then you can put, uh, hook up onto there. The main things as well, obviously, as I say, they're, they're the main things that you need to know, but just to point out a couple more things, you've got your engine oil, which is down here with your dipstick below. You've then got your disc, a brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, which is in there, your power steering fluid, and then finally, your washer fluid, which is just into there. That concludes everything underneath the bonnet. We're now going to move on to the other side. On the other side of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got a few vents and obviously ports, which I'll discuss with you now. Firstly, you've got this whale vent. This is for your heater, and in essence, this is the vehicle's chimney. Your whale is uh, your heater for your water heating. Um, you've obviously then got a separate heater for your space heater, which is inside. As I say, this is the heater, uh, sorry, the heater um, chimney in essence. This is your flue for that, um, and just your vent. Obviously, when traveling, um, sorry, when stationary on site, you don't want to block this area up because um, then you'll have to regas the system. So just make sure that that area is clear. And obviously, that can get quite hot, so just be careful of that. Next to that, you've then got your 230 volt socket, which allows you to charge up the vehicle. Obviously, when you're on site, you're gonna be using this. This is where you can put your hookup cable in and gain 230 volt electrics. To, to the side of that, you've got two compartments. You've got one which conceals your toilet cassette, and then above that, which I'll open up for you, is where you can put in your flush. With this particular vehicle, this compartment here, you can put in some pink liquid, which in essence is your flush, and you can uh, top that up from here. That means when you then go into the toilet and you click the button to flush the system, it's gonna use that pink fluid to flush out all the system on the contents, and then dump it into the cassette. As I say, this is where it can be filled up from. I'm now gonna open up the cassette for you and show you how to use it. Once open, you can see that the cassette is just here. Lift up the handle and then simply slide out. When using the cassette, what you need to do firstly is make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed. This is the number one thing that you need to always remember to do because what often happens is that might be forgotten, so it might be open for example, and you'll go to remove this cassette and it'll get stuck. What customers have done in the past is it's got stuck and almost jammed and then people have pulled it and continued to pull it and then therefore broken the cassette. So just always check that the blade on the toilet is closed before removing it. And as I say, and this is a rule of thumb with anything in the vehicle, if it feels like it's being forced, you are probably doing something wrong. So you need to obviously reevaluate what you're doing, take a minute and then look back into what you're doing. As I say, when you're using this, simply pull up on this and slide out. When you're emptying the cassette, you can turn out this funnel, unscrew the cap, and then on the back of the cassette, you've got an orange button, which is just there. Click that button in, and what that'll do is it'll re release a vacuum in the cassette, and it means that all the contents can uh, flow out in one steady slurry. Uh, slurry. Um, and obviously, when you are washing this out, put a bit of wash, um, bit of water in it just to wash it out and again dump that. Whilst we're here as well your toilet sachets as well as your blue chemical uh, for your toilet fluid uh, can also go in here um, just to obviously keep the system fresh and obviously dissolve any waste that goes into the cassette. 
one thing as well to show you on the top obviously I've discussed your button you've also got this orange tab which is just here now you don't need to do anything with this this is what makes contact with the blade as I mentioned your blade will open and close the cassette um, and in essence what that does is it makes contact with that and allows it to open and close obviously you need to make sure it's always in that position when you when you put it back in because if it's not again it's going to jam uh, and subsequently break so providing you've opened the cassette and you've removed it you don't need to do anything with that that can then slide back in like so it clips in the to the bottom here and then you can simply push the funnel back in moving on from the cassette toilet underneath here underneath directly from the cassette you'll notice that you've got uh, a little hole uh, which is like a valve uh, that again is your flue for your um, heater as I say this is for your water heater this one is for your space heater again this area can get hot because as in essence this is the chimney so where, this is where all the contents come out so it can get quite hot so just be careful of that whilst I'm down here as well you've got one of your drain down points which is here in a vehicle you've got three drain down points you've got one which is for your wastewater one for your fresh water and then one for your boiler drain down point all very important now the wastewater is external to this particular model which I'm going to show you now and your fresh and your boiler drain down is internal to the vehicle which obviously when we move on to the inside I am going to show you just going back to your wastewater as I say it's just underneath here and it's on a grey tap all you need to do is turn this um, I need two hands to do it but that will allow me to turn this valve and then it will dump all the water out obviously when you're on site you'll have a massive grid you drive over the grid and then simply turn that valve and it's going to dump all the waste water out whilst we are on the topic of obviously draining down you need to make sure that when you are moving off site that obviously you drain down all your systems including your boiler um, and what we say is since it is only water you can leave them all open because as you're traveling down the road the vibrations of the road uh, are obviously going to dump all the water and make sure that all the water is out and at the end of the day it is just water uh, you know it's no harmful chemical so it's not going to do any damage to anything moving on from your wastewater drain down you've got your fill up point for your fresh water just an indicator key just to unlock that and then you can simply turn it and remove you then put your hose in there, ideally a food grade, grade hose pipe, straight into there and you can fill up the tank. Your fresh water tank, once it's full, will start obviously coming out, that's when you, uh, when you know it's full. So not very technical but it works uh, and it's a good indicator. You can then check obviously on the inside for your levels and your water gauges etc. So that's where you fill up from for your waste water, uh, sorry for your fresh water. Moving along to the back, you notice on this particular model, we've got the bike rack, which is fitted, and also a tow bar along the bottom. You've also got your camera as well, which is just down by the license plate there. Moving to the other side, you've got your habitation door, but also a couple more things which I need to point out to you. You've firstly got a Vision Plus external aerial for a TV, which is just there. You've then got your gas bottle uh, locker, which is indicated here. Now for your gas locker, obviously you need to make sure that all your bottles when traveling are turned off at the bottle for safety, because obviously if you are involved in a crash, um, you don't want your bottles to be going on. So make sure that they are turned off uh, for safety when traveling. So bottles go into there and they are connected through a pigtail, which will just connect up to the regulator. Next, as I say, you've got your habitation door and then you'll notice that you've got your two fridge vents on this side. Um, your fridge vents, uh, I'll, I'll, move, I'll go into more detail about this when we're on the inside, but your fridge is nothing like a domestic fridge. Um, obviously it doesn't pull as much power as a domestic fridge. So in essence this is where the fridge gets all of its air from. And what happens is it pulls the air through and cools that air to then cool the fridge. Now it's bear, you know, bear in mind if the sun is beating down on the side of the vehicle and hitting these vents, if you can try and turn around the vehicle um, because obviously try and help it out because as I say that's where it's pulling the air from so just bear that in mind as I say it's not like a domestic fridge now that concludes the outside of the vehicle we've discussed over everything we're now going to move on to the inside um, to talk you through the systems on board so coming into the motorhome obviously just above your habitation door you have your control paddle and also your bed key for your drop down bed at the front now to talk you through your control panel, firstly you've got your big master switch which is here. If I click that on, it says master on and it activates your lights. 
Before I move into the options on this panel, across here you've got a pump. If I click that, that activates your water pump. Your water pump obviously only needs, uh, needs activating when you've got water in the system. If you don't, uh, if you've not got water in the system, obviously you're going to burn out that pump. So make sure that there's water in the fresh water tank before doing that. When you're on site and you need to use this, you need to click on your pump and then you need to go to your taps. You need to go to all your taps, including your shower, and you need to turn that to on and turn it to hot. What that's going to do, it's going to pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler system. So therefore priming the boiler and then it's going to come out of the tap and then therefore priming the tap. It's going to spurt and splutter and then when it's running steadily, you know that you prime your system for your hot water. Now to get into the habit, once you've done that on the hot, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. And once it's running steadily, you have prime your system. Now you need to do this, as I say, for all your taps, including your shower. Bear in mind as well, once you have done that, your pump can stay on. So don't worry about burning it out once you've done that. Because on each of your taps, you've got something called a micro switch. And it'll only activate the pump when you require it. Um, similar to obviously what you've got in your house. So that's your pump and how to prime your system. Coming back to your control panel, you've then got interior lights. And then you've also got an external uh, external um, door light, which is on the outside, which you can activate and deactivate. Moving through the options, you've then got up and down switches here. These allow you to flick through the options. So firstly, you've got your space heater. Now this is how you heat the vehicle. You then need to click, obviously, this button here to turn it on. And then you can change, obviously, the options in regards to the uh, temperature. So these two allow you to select, uh, sorry, allow you to navigate and this button allows you to select. Flicking through the options, you've got, as I say, your space heater there. You've then got your water heater, which is there, which again, as I say, if I click that on, you can turn it and activate it. you then got your waste level. So we've still got waste water in the vehicle at the moment in your waste water tank. And then you've got your user settings which as indicated here, you can click on here to activate. You then got your internal temperature, your battery select. So if you want, you can select which battery you want. Um, obviously all your lights running off. Never never change this, always make sure it, you leave it on leisure. Because obviously if you do leave it on, if you do put it on the um, vehicle battery, it's just gonna drain that battery. Uh, and then you won't be able to start the vehicle. And then you're having to resort to jump in the vehicle. So always make sure that you run it off the leisure. Uh, just flicking back through the options because it's just timed out on me. Um, you've got, as you can see, your battery amp and your voltage. And then we're back to the beginning there. So everything can be indicated through here. Moving on from the control panel, we're now moving on to your um, drop down bed key panel. To operate this, you need your key, which I'm going to put in now. You simply turn your key and that'll activate your um, control panel. You can either take the bed up or down. When operating the bed, obviously this is your bed which is concealed in here. You firstly need to make sure that, of course, this area is clear um, and you know no one is here, uh, obviously for safety. Once you've uh, made sure of that, you can then drop the bed down, which I'll do for you now. With the key in turned, you can then drop the bed like so. Now obviously I've just put it halfway there just to give you an example of where it'll drop to. However, this will drop it all the way down so they are in line with here. You've got two up here and then you've also got a further berth down here. So you've got two down here, two up there um, and in essence it's a double bunk. To create this area into a bed, what you need to do is using the table leg, you can see that button on the table. You need to click that, that allows this lower part of the leg to fold in and in essence creates the base. You then can drop the table into this slot on these rails here, as you can see either side, and that creates the base of the bed. Then using your infill cushions and these areas here, you can then create your double bed here. And as I say, that leaves you with two here and then also two up there, which you'll need to access with the ladder. Moving on from that, we're moving into your kitchen area. Obviously, we discussed about priming your system for your tap. You have got your hob 
which is underneath here, which is three gas elements. Obviously, you need to make sure that the gas is turned on at the bottle before, um, obviously, powering up the hob. And you've then got your oven and grill, which is just below there. You've then got a bit more storage here, as you can see. And underneath here. Now, I wanted to show you here, you can see, obviously, there's some red taps, which are just underneath the oven and grill. With these red taps, they each have a, um, a an icon on there just to indicate what they are for. What they are are isolation valves. Your isolation valves obviously help you isolate certain areas and are mainly used for the technicians when we are checking in your van um, on hab services and things like that. We say to customers, we advise you not to play around with these. Only use these when you are advised to or a technician um, shows you obviously how to um, how to do so. The majority, as I say, that you need to know is all done on that panel. But as I say, a bit more storage, which is just underneath the oven and grill. Moving on to your fridge, which is just beside that. Your fridge is a Dometic fridge, and it's known as a three-way fridge because there's three ways to power it. It's a really simple system. You can see if we come to the top of the fridge, at the moment it's in the off position. As I say before, it's a three-way fridge, so you've got three ways to power it. So you've firstly got a little um, plug that's for your hookup so that will allow your fridge to run off 230 volts you've then got a little leisure battery icon which is for your 12 volt so when you're uh, driving the vehicle uh, you can power the fridge off the leisure battery and then finally you've got a little gas icon to obviously run the fridge off gas uh, so when you be using uh, obviously each one obviously in the opposi off position when you're storing the vehicle it needs to be in that position you've then got your hookup, so when you're on site, the majority of the time, you'll be running it off your hookup. You've then got your leisure battery. You're going to be running that when you're driving the vehicle. Run it off that, rather, when you're driving the vehicle. And then finally, when you're wild camping, you'll be running it off your gas, which is the last one. Now, a lot of people typically think that they can run the leisure battery off the... Um, Sorry, they can run the fridge off the leisure battery when they're wild camping. However, this is not this is not the case. The reason being is the uh, the fridge actually draws too much power so if you was to run it off the leisure battery it'd simply trip your vehicle so make sure that when you're wild camping it's always off your gas the only time obviously to um, run it off your leisure battery is when you're traveling because you've got in this vehicle a built-in alternator so what that's going to do is going to charge that when the vehicle battery is running it's going to send a constant feeder charge and power the leisure battery hence why it can then be powered uh, used rather to be um, to power the fridge uh, moving across from that, you've then got obviously all your um, your temperature uh, settings here, so you can use that on that dial. And then if you are running it off gas, you have got an igniter switch, which is just on there when you've got the gas all hooked up. Now, with your fridge, just quickly, as I mentioned outside, it's not like a domestic fridge. So uh, what it does a very good job at maintaining temperature, but doesn't do the best of jobs getting it down to temperature. So what you need to remember to do is if you want cooled things to be in the fridge, you need to put cooled things in because it'll maintain that temperature. It's the same thing for the freezer. So if you want frozen things to be in the freezer, put frozen things in. Because uh, as I say, it'll do a very good job at maintaining that temperature. Now, before moving uh, away from the front portion of the vehicle and moving into the back, you have also got uh, a couple of things that I need to show you. Underneath here, you'll notice uh, that you've got a panel which you can lift up. Located in there is your leisure battery. Now, you don't need to access the leisure battery. Uh, however, as I say, if you do ever need to change this out, it is located in there for you. At the side of the seat as well is where you can find your RCD breaker. And this locates all, obviously, your trips. Uh, your trip switches and also your fuses. If your vehicle ever trips, you can come to here um, and obviously check your fuses um, and reset it. Now, a really good tip for you is on here, you've got a little button which has a T on it and that stands for test. If you want, when you're on site and for example, you can't get power to the vehicle, so you're all hooked up and you're not getting any lights or anything or no 230 volt is working, you need to come to this click your button in which is your test button click that and if all of these trip you know that you're getting power to the vehicle so you know that there's not a fault with the um, hookup cable that you're using or uh, there's no fault with the site there's a fault with your vehicle and what that does is it allows you to isolate the problem from there you can then check your fuses now you'll typically find that there might be a fault with the site um, 
hence why they won't trip down but obviously if they do as i say there's a fault with your vehicle that's where you need to check your fuses and that's how you do so next moving on we've got your bathroom area which is just into here you've got your cassette toilet and then obviously your shower now we've discussed obviously priming your system that you need to do that for the shower and the two taps and we've briefly discussed obviously how to uh, remove the cassette as I mentioned outside, you've got something on the cassette called a blade, which will close and open the cassette. Your blade is this silver handle here. At the moment, it's open, it's closed rather, and if I push away from me, it is open. That then allows you to see into the cassette. So during use, what you need to do is open this up. You can then, all the waste will then drop into the cassette. You then need to click your button on the top of the toilet, which activates your flush, and that'll flush the system. Once you've done that, Close the blade, and then on that will obviously close the cassette uh, and stop any odours from escaping. You need to do that all the time, because then if you get in the habit as well, when you come to remove the cassette, this should all, always be closed. On the top, you've then got your button, as I mentioned, for your flush, which is that blue button. It's worth mentioning that that will only activate when, you've, when your pump is on. Um, and also, on the top of there, you'll get a red light to indicate when the cassette is full, which you then, if you do get that, obviously need to empty. Coming out of the bathroom area, you'll notice that you've got a small hatch underneath here. Uh, that is just for your wastewater, um, and that allows you to access the tank. So if you want, you can clean it out. And that is just done so by there. As I say, your wastewater, however, is external to the vehicle. So this isn't how you drain it down. This is just simply a means of cleaning it. Coming up, you've then got your storage. At the moment, we've got all the uh, vehicle's carpets in, and also, the screens for the side windows because um, you've not got obviously Remy's cab blinds at the front um, which is done so through there the reason I've opened this up just to show you is you can see that you've got an aerial which is here you've got the aerial box which is beside that with a green light on which indicates that it's on there's a switch on the top of the aerial which will turn that on and off obviously when using it you need to flick that switch on to get that green light now that light will change it'll go red amber and green green indicates a good single signal uh, and red uh, a bad signal to operate this you then need to obviously turn that on unscrew this um, and then you can simply push the aerial up and then tighten it back into place you've then got this arm which will then if you are struggling for signal will tilt the head of the aerial uh, depending on obviously how much signal you need moving on from your aerial obviously as I say this is all connected up so you can connect your TV uh, we are moving into the lounge area now with your lounge area firstly this will turn into a bed to do that all you need to do is simply remove this middle cushion and underneath here you have a pull out uh, section here which is connected to some slats all you need to do is pull this area out pull it all the way to here and as i say that'll drag some uh, slats around uh, with it rather along with it uh, therefore creating the base you can then use these cushions to infill push them into the center drop these side ones down and there is your bed as you can see i've just removed this uh, side of the bench you can just see um, your that you've got a tank in the back here and as i say this is for your fresh water you can see a pipe that leads into the tank which is where your fill up point is which i mentioned on the outside the reason i've taken this off is obviously to show you where this is but also this is where you can drain the system down from looks very complicated but the easiest thing to uh, the only thing you need to do is drain down this system so you need to remove the cushions as i've done pop this up and then underneath here you'll notice it's quite hard to see on camera but there's a little um, tap with that tap all you need to do is turn it that'll then drain down the entire system you'll then notice that you've also got a cap at the top there which you can unscrew and that is a way of obviously cleaning the tank if you ever do need to and that is for draining the fresh water as i say this one's internal to the vehicle and your wastewater is external now before moving from your um, onto your final drain down point which is your boiler drain down point uh, it's worth mentioning on all your windows and you've got a fly screen and also blackout blind which is there you have also got obviously these clips here which when you undo like so you can simply push out and then using the black knobs on each side you can tighten into place 
um, obviously make sure that they are closed and it's the same thing for the aerial make sure that the aerial is down when traveling off because obviously you don't want to be hitting anything and especially you don't want any wind coming through here because it could potentially break and snap the window off so just bear that in mind when you are traveling on to shut these obviously make sure it's shut all the way and not placed on venting to avoid that and then you're good to go now the final drain down point is just underneath here in your lounge um, the main thing underneath here is obviously as I've done I've taken off the cushions you can then lift this up and access access your boiler now this does look very complicated it's worth mentioning that piece of wood does sit on there just to protect it remove that wood and then you can access your boiler now it does look very complicated but it's very simple the only thing that you need to know is this yellow tap down here which again is quite difficult to see on camera I'm gonna get a torch on it now so with the torch on it you can see that yellow valve is for your uh, boiler system at the moment it's closed in the down position you need to flick that up to open up the boiler and then drain that down now as we were saying outside with all your drain down points including your boiler you can simply leave open when you are traveling because the vibration of the road is going to get them all out so to conclude your drain down points you've got one on the outside which is wastewater you've got one on the inside which is on the back which is for your fresh water and then the final one is underneath your front seats um, for the boiler drain down and as i say you need to always make sure that they are turned off um, and, and drained down especially in the colder climates because you don't want any frozen water in the system now that concludes the handover on the Bailey Advance 665. I hope you enjoyed.